been a tough week for NBA officials. Been a tough season for NBA officials. Um, Bontemps, you were there in the garden on, on Monday night with uh, the Knicks uh, situation. They had a sort of interesting karmic turn because two weeks ago in Houston, you remember Jalen Brunson gets called for the foul at the end of the game on uh, Jalen Green, was it? If, uh, no, Aaron Holiday. Aaron Holiday, yeah. Regardless, it was a it was a a whoops pool report, just like this one was a whoops pool report. Yeah, no, at least in that instance, you could have said if you were the officials, yeah, we messed this call up, but you also had the ability to challenge it had you not messed your challenge up earlier, which the Knicks did. But they still right, messed. But the, it the, up. the key no is, call, is that right. in the is it it had been very rare for the officials to admit a mistake in the pool report, um, you know, which is the interview that they give right after the game. Usually they, you know, it's, you know, they sort of give their name, rank and serial number and say that the foul or whatever was called because what, you know, and it they usually unusual. only admit it if it's an egregious miss. And we've had two egregious misses in that have directly impacted weeks. games in two weeks. Like I said, it wasn't a great showing tonight either. The other thing that we've been seeing this year is we've been seeing l- the loss of composure from referees just ejecting guys like out of nowhere. Um, it, it, it's not been the greatest season for officiating. And you guys know that I am usually a staunch defender of officials. Too small. Too it's, small. Been, it's been tough. Enough okay. with the too small. Enough. It's been tough, Bon Temps. And um uh it's not something that's easily fixed and it's not something that you know you can do about it. You just gotta be better is a long story short. Yeah, I mean look, we are we're dealing with the human element here, right? And you're gonna have mistakes at times, and that is just part of the game in general. People are gonna miss shots, people are gonna miss calls. The call, the the whole thing on Monday was brutal i mean it was a crazy sequence i you know we as a group put together the questions for the pool reporter brian mahoney from the associated press did it with james williams who was the crew chief um and you could have i thought there could have been a foul call on the play when josh hart knocked it away from simone fontecchio they argued that there wasn't one I did, I'm not sure josh hart got fouled on the shot he made over jalen duran they said that that was also a correct call um, but James Williams, like I said, the post had one of the best shots ever of him literally just staring at this car crash in front of him and just <laughs> watching it. My favorite part, if you go back and watch it, Jalen Brunson picks up the ball and looks like a kid who got some candy, wasn't supposed to. And he kind of <laughs> yeah. like looked around and was like, oh, all right, we're good. And then went and ended up passing to Josh Hart to win the game. and. It's like it's like in Halloween where you're you're checking. Hey, do they have a a, yes. a, a ring cam? Because they're boy, these are like full yes. size candy these bars, and there's a bunch ass, of them just big, big out full here. candy bars that we got in our hands. But listen, can I just uh, make call a quick timeout? That wasn't a story from McMahon's childhood. We didn't have ring cams when we were kids. <laughs> That's a story from the last decade. Hey, one which thing means I can that do. McMahon is not only trick or treating, but you know, stealing. I don't. I just. Can, I can relate to the immature little brats. That's all. Well, listen, we know okay. McMahon is a heightist, so he's probably taking the candy from the kids because they're too short. Saying, "Hey, these kids can't have this candy." Yeah, I just let the kids do the candy, and then I just rob them. <laughs> that, let them do the trick sounds, or treating, and I'm just that, coming in as a as a bully on those little fellows. All right, that sounds about right. So there, there's also some added backstory on this Pistons thing. So Saturday Pistons. night, the Pistons are playing Orlando. The last two-minute report claims Paolo Bancaro did not travel on what was a game-winning shot. Paolo hits a nice shot over Jalen Duran. He pretty clearly looked like he traveled to me. He hopped. He, he did a, yes. yeah. a full-on hop in the middle was, of his... The it, last yeah. two-minute sure, report didn't say that was a travel. I didn't no, mean, they, they, okay. claimed it was a, they claimed it was a correct no-call, which, okay, fine. They, they lean towards saying they're right if it's a 50-50-ish call. I thought he traveled pretty clearly. The Pistons were angry about that. Monday's game, which was at the Garden, was originally supposed to be in Detroit. However, 
when the Knicks were in the in-season <laughs> tournament. Now, we need to back way up. As the in-season tournament was playing out, the NBA made this big show of saying, well, listen, some teams are going to get an extra home game, and some teams are going to get an extra road game, and that's just how it's going to be, and that's how it, that's just, you'll just have to deal with it. Right, and that's so, like how, like, uh, Indiana and Milwaukee end up playing five times. It just, right. it just happens. Just yeah. how it, just how it went. Well, the Knicks, because the Knicks lost on the road in the first, uh, in the quarterfinals to the Bucks, there was some scheduling issue at the garden. I, I can't remember what it was, but they had to play the Celtics on the road in the other game, the other makeup game. So because of that, they were down a road game or they were down a home game for the year. So the NBA just out of nowhere, a couple weeks later, just sends out this email and says, this Pistons game has been rescheduled. It's being played at the Garden now, which is very clearly the NBA saying, this team stinks. Right. We're going to just take a home game from them and we'll give it to the Knicks because the Knicks right. are in the playoffs. And we'll have a full house there. Right. Probably not so much in Detroit. Right. Yeah. The, the other listen. If I know some of those New York media members, they weren't happy. They got screwed out of airline miles, Marriott points, and apparently like the best uh, media pregame meal in the league. The Knicks writers were not upset to not have to fly to Detroit. I can tell you that. Uh, however, <laughs> the, this email comes out of nowhere a couple weeks after the tournament's over. It just says, announces, Knicks get an extra home game. And yes, the Pistons get the gate. I'm sure they get, I'm sure that's why the Pistons agreed because they're sure they make more money off a Knicks game. Bottom line is, they have this call go against them on Saturday. They're down a home game that they should be playing anyway at home. And then this call happens after the game, a game where they outplayed the Knicks for a large stretch of it. Quentin Grimes, who had been traded away, had a great fourth quarter. He, was, he made what he thought was the winning basket. Quentin Grimes, who wanted to be out of New York, makes his driving layup that's going to be fantastic the Fantastic shot. Evan Fournier hit a ton of shots in the fourth quarter. Those two guys basically brought the Pistons back, had the game seem like they had it won. And then it gets yanked out from underneath them at the last second on this call. And again, I will give James Williams some credit for admitting he got it wrong as the crew chief when he was staring at it. And yeah, he could have let it just show up in the last two minute report. I mean, but... admitting you had it wrong. That's like when Wendy voted Joker as MVP after lobbying the whole time for Embiid. <laughs> like it's at some point the, the, the I was saying that Embiid shouldn't have been disqualified because oh, he had no, a sprained no, no. ankle. My, no, my point is, if you're wrong, 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 and then admit it at the end, you don't get credit.